Wednesday webinar. You have uh, Daniel Pantich here. We're just waiting for all our other attendees to uh, join the session, so we'll give them a couple more minutes before we jump right in and uh, get uh, right into it. So it won't be too long. The screen there, and we can take a look at that. Okay. Okay, so you should all be able to uh, see my screen. Okay, Mark's just hey, Daniel, are you, able, are you able to hear me okay? Okay, I can hear you uh, fine, Mark. So, uh, yeah, no, thanks for uh, doing a check in there. We did have uh, a bit of an audio issue earlier on, but uh, that seems to be ironed out there. So, Mark, just confirming um, I've got the right screen showing up here with our FP demo system. Yep, looks good. Yep. Excellent, great. So the additional resources that I was mentioning a little bit earlier on, uh, you can of course all access them here. We have our training and support links, uh, so uh, be sure to uh, check those out and of course you can open them up in a new tab. Uh, very easy to just right click and as you can see here we've got our FP training uh, which is geared towards primes and we've got self-guided learning programs, webinars where you can sign up of course and the um, FP library or the mothership of how-tos. Okay, so uh, very searchable, easy to use, and uh, of course will help you immensely. So uh, just going uh, back to the agenda, the first item of course uh, relates to notes in function point. So notes can be used in a variety of ways uh, in FP. And once you log into function point, the first thing that you get taken to is your dashboard. And if your dashboard is set up like this, that means that you are using the classic or the default dash dashboard, uh, which is made up of, of course, your timesheets, your jobs, your tasks and to-dos, and your pinned notes. Now, your pinned notes would essentially be your sticky notes. And you can add notes directly from your dashboard. You can also upload files with them and associate these notes to specific jobs. Now the great thing about these sticky notes is that you can hover over them and see the contents of these notes without even having to open up the note and you can also loop in your colleagues. You can attach these notes uh, to uh, a single individual or you can share it with the entire team. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like just from the dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and add a note and this takes us to the note add page and let's just say update on pilots oh, pilot program there we go excellent okay so just say hi team please take a look at this update thanks Okay, uh, so automatically what you'll notice is the company that's selected should in fact be your agency. Uh, of course, you being a staff member of your agency, you're adding a note uh, from your own FP system uh, and the contact will by default be yourself. Uh, what we can do at this stage, we can then select a job and of course this is optional should we wish to associate this note to a specific job in the system. And in this case, I would like to definitely do that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this to a client. Okay, so that will be Giorgio Armani. And we would like to associate this uh, note to an Armani job. We've got a couple here in the system. And let's call this one here the Vancouver Fashion Week brochure. Now the note category is uh, also an important piece. Of course, you can customize your own note categories. Uh, and it's a really easy thing to do uh, in the admin section. When you do select from the drop-down, you'll notice that you have a bunch of different categories to choose from. So depending upon the nature of uh, the note, it could be uh, a meetings, uh, minutes notes, it could be a phone call, uh, and of course, uh, again, you can customize these. But uh, in this case, let's just call this one or categorize as a current status note. Now the uh, follow-up date and time is optional, so you could of course uh, select to uh, put in a follow-up follow date and time, uh, but in this case we just want to make this a very simple sticky note that we wish to share with a couple of our colleagues. So let's say we want to share this with the copywriters, uh, perhaps with uh, Chris here, Sarah, 
as well as Tate. Now, if you do have a file that you wish to share with this note or upload it in conjunction with, uh, you can, of course, um, drag and drop that from your dashboard or your desktop, rather, and I'm going to do that right in this second here. So we can just pop that in there and submit. Okay, so we have now successfully created a note in the system and that's been added to those people's dashboards. What you'll notice up here on the top left is a breadcrumb trail so we can see the note title, we can see which job it's a part of, okay, and of course uh, which company or client that note leads back to, in this case Giorgio Armani. And of course we have a basic info tab as well as a files tab. And this is where we can see uh, the, the uh, asset that we've uploaded and of course we can go ahead and access that anytime. Yeah, looking great there. Okay, so uh, let's just close that off and let's go back to our dashboard here. So I'm going to choose the classic dashboard and take a look at our pin notes. And what you'll notice under your pin notes will be the note that we've just added to the system. Okay, so that's visible. And of course, uh, your colleagues and fellow teammates will see the very same pin note in their function point system or their dashboards. In case they haven't logged into the system, you may have set up alerts and notifications, uh, in which case they will then be notified that a note has been added to the system or it's been pinned to uh, their dashboards. And of course, when you are done with certain notes, instead of clogging up your pin notes, of course, you can go ahead and just unpin those and take them off your dashboard. The notes, however, will remain in the system under the notes section, but they are unpinned and therefore you've cleared up a bit of clutter there. So that's a little bit um, on the pin notes side of things. Mark, do we have any questions around the pin notes yet? We've had a couple questions, but they've been pretty straightforward and I've uh, been able to uh, to answer them behind the scenes. But there is actually one thing that, that you could mention that I, I didn't in one of my answers, and that's just around um, around alerts. I'm not sure if you were if you're going to talk about alerts at all, but you could maybe just kind of talk just a bit about um, mm -hmm. you know what, how you know if if you might want to receive an alert related to a note being pinned to you. Yeah, fantastic. Um, well, uh, with the alerts in Function Point, they are quite granular and very powerful uh, thing to uh, to set up and use. Uh, we kind of have a dual pronged approach when it comes to alerts in FP, and of course, uh, not uh, all of you may have access to the admin section, so you really need to do check uh, with your FP Prime or your Function Point administrator in house uh, to make sure that. Uh, you've got the right alerts uh, set up for yourself. Uh, but uh, you can see that we have here an alert section as well as an email section. So essentially, uh, you can set up alerts, uh, which are function point, system alerts, as well as email notifications. Uh, so that's where the uh, dual pronged approach comes in. But if we take a look here on the left hand side, we have a note section, which is uh, geared around the alerts for notes. So if a new note is added into the system, uh, that can then trigger a function point system alert, which we have right up here, as well as an email notification. And of course, you may have uh, alert subscription sets, uh, which have been uh, created by your FP administrator and uh, may apply to specific teams and so on. Uh, now, the comments as well come into play here. So uh, we will um, uh, discuss the comments uh, a little bit later on and how they work, but you can, of course, uh, set up your alerts uh, for both comments. And depending upon uh, if you are a, a company AE or maybe a job contact, you can specify the alerts uh, to be triggered only if you are associated with that job uh, or if uh, a new note is added for any job or any case, uh, it can trigger uh, a notification. And, and an alert. So uh, that's a little bit um, on the alert side of things. Okay. And uh, any questions uh, with regards to um, uh, alerts or notes yet, Mark? No. All good. No, I think, yeah, it looks good. You mentioned you're going to talk a bit about the comments uh, a little bit later on. I think that's the only other one. So yeah, we'll uh, get to that when you uh, when you talk about it. 
Fantastic. Um, so let's just go back to our dashboard. And I just wanted to uh, recap that we started off the session by adding a pinned note from our dashboards. Uh, so that was just one way of going ahead and adding notes to the system. What I'd like to do is now show you how you can add a note elsewhere in the system. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at recently viewed company or a client, in this case, Giorgio Armani. Okay, and you can add a note directly from the company or the client page. So up on your right, you'll notice we have the add new function. And of course, let's go ahead and add a note from here. And it will be exactly the same uh, menu and, and setup as if we uh, were pinning the note from the dashboard. So all the options are there. And of course, you'll notice here that we can go ahead and pin this note as well. Uh, so let's just call this one. Uh, sunny Vancouver note and let's go ahead and submit that okay so that's been uh, added to the system and of course we can see that this sunny Vancouver note belongs to Giorgio Armani uh, if we wanted to we could of course uh, upload a file uh, along with this uh, particular note and again that's just another way that you can go ahead and uh, add notes directly from the company page. Now you'll notice that the company page does have a bunch of different tabs. So of course your basic info, your contacts, and the notes tab right here. So any notes that have been added into the system uh, would then reside under this uh, particular notes tab. So think of this as a central repository where all the notes will be kept and we can then hover over them and see the contents of the note. We can see, uh, for example, who the note uh, was posted by or created by. Uh, we can also see uh, if we have linked the note to a specific contact on the client side. Uh, just like in this case here, we can say we've linked this note to Linda Fashionista. And uh, on the right-hand side, we can also see if the notes have been associated with specific jobs in the system, uh, which we can see as well. Uh, in this case, we've got the New York Fashion Week promo video, and that is related to uh, this particular note. So that's just one way of adding notes to the system. Uh, of course, uh, you can go ahead and add notes directly from the notes module uh, right above here. Uh, so you can, of course, add notes and uh, do the same thing from this section. Mark, any uh, questions with regards to adding notes from the company page or directly from the notes module? Uh, yeah, there's um, there was a good question uh, mm -hmm. that came in I thought, that I thought we might talk towards. Uh, that is just around the follow-up dates and kind of how that's that's reflected. And I'm, I'm going to talk towards one part of it, and then I think that maybe if you could show um, – if you could show another aspect of it, could you go back to that last note that you created for a quick second? Yep. Sure. One second. Let's go ahead and have a look at that. So that's the uh, sunny Vancouver note. Yeah. And then if you could just edit edit that note real quick. So okay. Yeah. Let's use this one. So. Um, the, I, I'm going to talk towards one thing, and then maybe, maybe you can show the other. So the the follow up date. Um, is you can use it in kind of two ways. The uh, a follow up date, if you if you don't select create follow up task, then the follow up date can be used to send an alert. But that's all it will do. If you just enter a follow up date and you don't create follow up task, it'll just send an alert for you. So it's not going to show up anywhere else. It's not going to like show up on your dashboard or anything like that as like a new thing. Um, it'll just send an alert to you saying, hey, this notes follow up date has been hit, um, and then. You can, you know, click on the link. It'll bring you to the note, um, and it'll also. You could also have it uh, send a system alert as well, which is a little bell up at the top right. Um, however, if you do create a follow-up task, which is usually what you'd want to do, so if, you, if you're going to enter a follow-up date, usually you'd put in, you'd you'd click that button because you want an item that's actually on your dashboard, and the item that's created is is a little bit different than a normal task and Daniel, you know, I think that's maybe that's what you can show off is when you so yeah if you want to submit that and then let's take a look at the dashboard when you create a um, a, a follow-up task uh, it's actually going to show up um, 
as a little bit of a different item than the other one. So you'll see it there. There's that sunny Vancouver. So there's that, that task that was created from that follow-up. Um, but also, if you uh, Dave, if you click on that where it says "Open, Assign, and In Progress," just up at the um, just in the uh, uh, in the filters there, um, and then so just a little bit uh, just beside kind of where it says "Assign to Me," uh, "Open, Assign, and Progress," search titles and descriptions. So here you can look at task type, and if you select prospecting, then it'll only show tasks that were created via a note so that's a way of kind of separating those items out so that you can see you know all of your tasks of course which is how often you know people will probably usually use it to see all of their tasks but if you wanted to see just the tasks related to you know follow-ups and uh, it's called prospecting because you often use like a sales process um, but these are the, all the notes all the tasks created specifically from the process of creating follow-up tasks and entering a follow-up date in a note so that's how it'll uh, it'll show up on your dashboard. Anything you want to add to that, Daniel? Or did... Yeah, no, that, that, that's great. Um, in, in fact, I really have to uh, admit uh, that I didn't know that trick, Mark, so uh, that's great. Uh, the, the fact that that's uh, categorized under the prospecting task. And of course, uh, to go back to view all of your tasks, you can uh, do that simply just by going back to open, assigned, and in progress. So generally speaking, you're going to be on this particular status because you're looking at tasks which are open and in progress and have been assigned to yourself. Excellent. Uh, of course, uh, you can also associate this task that we've um, added uh, from a note. We can associate that to a specific job uh, because if we have a look on the uh, job column here, we can see that it's not linked to any specific job, uh, nor it's uh, linked to a specific client. And we can see who it's assigned by, assigned to, and of course, uh, the due date there as well. Excellent. Okay, uh, so just going back to uh, the uh, note that we recently created uh, a little bit earlier on, let's take a look at this one here, the update on pilot program. Okay, uh, now Function Point uh, does allow you to upload files to the FP cloud. And what that means is that you can upload a variety of files. We don't really have uh, restrictions around what file format you can uh, select to upload. Uh, the limitation that uh, is in place is that each file cannot exceed 50 meg. So it's 50 meg per file, uh, but of course uh, you might uh, decide to upload um, hundreds of files. And uh, of course you can see that notes also have a separate tab where you can then view the file that's been uploaded. And uh, it's really easy to upload files against a, a particular note. On your right hand side, you'll notice that there is an upload file uh, feature. And of course, you can then just go ahead and drag and drop the file there. And uh, let's just go ahead and do that again. In this case, I'm going to uh, just choose this example file. And you can see it's uh, quite quick. Um, this file here is uh, just under 7 meg. So Again, that really just depends on your upload speeds with your ISP. But let's give this one a description and call this one concept show for pilots. And we can go ahead and uh, submit that or just click done. But before I do that, I do want to uh, just mention uh, what client visible means. Client visible means that you can also share this particular file that you're uploading uh, with your client. Uh, so if your clients have access to the Function Point client portal, uh, you may be collaborating with them from your FP system uh, with, uh, with your client through the portal and sharing files back and forth. And clicking this will then make this file client visible. And of course, your clients will then receive an email notification uh, to that uh, particular file that you're sharing with them. So let's just go ahead and click done. And now we have two files that have been uploaded and uh, belong to this particular note. If we take a look at the breadcrumb trail, this is always something important to uh, take note of, we can see where everything leads back to. So update on the pilot program note is a part of this job. So that's of course the job number, the job name, and then that leads back to the actual company or client. If we were to click on the job number or the job name, that will take us to the job page. 
and we can see that the job itself has a section for files and we can quickly access those files here. Now, in many instances, we find that uh, clients may create additional folders uh, to store their files. So if we uh, take a look at uh, the company page, which is really the top of the hierarchy, everything starts with your company or client, you'll notice that there is also a files tab. Uh, so this is really where all the files are being stored for everything and anything that's ever been done for this client and typically the files will be stored within their respective job folders just like these couple of examples that we're looking at here. We can see uh, the descriptions around these folders if we have any, uh, also the size and of course we can drop those down and see uh, what's going on in there. Now, uh, common practice is to add additional folders. Now these folders could be, uh, let, let's say, uh, copy folders, they could be reference material folders, perhaps um, previous examples and so on. So let's just call this one uh, artwork. Okay, and let's just say concepts and submit that. So what you'll notice under your client files tab, you will now have a folder called artwork. And of course, if you choose to upload a file, uh, a file again against your company or client page, you will then have the option to choose where you wish to actually upload that file to. And of course, you might have five more folders here to choose from and go ahead and uh, upload those just as we did a little bit earlier on. Mark, do we have any questions uh, with regards to file uploads and how that works? Uh, nothing. Nothing has come in that uh, that I think that you should talk about on screen. Uh, I mean, it's all it's all pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, I, th I think you can kind of keep going. Uh, I mean, you might want to talk just a bit a bit towards files related to tasks um, mm -hmm. and how that mm -hmm. kind of lines up a little bit on the tasking side of things. Yeah, sure. Uh, so if we uh, click on tasks here, uh, let's just go ahead and just choose uh, this one here. We've got tasks for this. Uh, particular client to job and that is for of course the New York Fashion Week promo video. Now you can upload files against tasks as well. So not only against notes, jobs, projects, estimates, uh, you can also do that against specific tasks. And in this case, as you can all see, we are looking at this uh, one task which is the Amani concert graphics task and uh, we can uh, see that breadcrumb trail. So again, really important to take note of that breadcrumb trail to uh, make sure that you know exactly where you're at in the system. Now the task that we're looking at has tabs underneath it. Of course the basic info tab uh, shows us uh, details around creation dates, assigned dates, uh, what this task actually involves. There could be some uh, instructions or descriptions and uh, further along we have a files tab as well. So this is where you can go ahead and the same sort of uh, mechanics apply in terms of how you upload the files. This is where you can go ahead and then upload your file, drag and drop it here in this field. Uh, choose potentially if you uh, add a folder, you can uh, upload it to a certain folder, give it a description and um, again, really easy to, uh, to upload those. Now, comments are great to be used uh, for approval processes, for example, and just uh, really keeping uh, timestamps on uh, sharing feedback uh, internally amongst yourselves uh, as well as with your clients if they are using the FP client portal. And this is where you can go ahead and add comments. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just do that here. You'll notice that we have an add comment button. And let's just say, looking great. Um, great work and save that. Okay. Now, what you'll notice is that the comment itself has a date and timestamp. You can see who it's been created by, uh, the comment itself, and of course, uh, depending upon your permissions, uh, you may be able to uh, modify that um, as well uh, or delete it, but typically uh, those permissions uh, would be disabled. The idea is that you're going to end up with a thread of comments back and forth. This could be from several team members and uh, again you can see uh, everything being traceable to uh, to which team member, what time 
and of course uh, that's all associated with that one task and the files are also there as well. So that's a little bit, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, thanks for, um, I don't know how you knew I wanted to ask a question. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's two questions that came in um, that are directly related to each other, and, and I thought instead of typing in answers, I would just uh, answer them verbally. Um, so the first question is around wondering how the files are stored and backed up. Um, is there maximum file size or total for all files uploaded to FP? Uh, there's another question here around, do clients use FP as their only file saving system or do they use additional backup off, uh, backup file options? And I'm kind of going to relate those, those questions to each other and talk a little bit about the files um, in function points. So, um, you know, the, the main reason for files in function point uh, is really around kind of you know, sharing information with relation to work. So you're, you're uploading files with relation to, to work that's being done and not really as like a digital asset management system. So it's not, it's not going to replace like a file server if you have, you know, you're not going to, um, although, you know, we actually do use a lot of the file management ourselves. We, we upload, um, you know, files into, into uh, things all the time and, you know, for, you know, we did have uh, in a lot of our brand assets in, in, in our system for, uh, you know, in our, in our, under our own company. But that being said, it's not really meant to, to you know, completely replace, you know, your, uh, your files, you know, file folder structure in your server. Um, and that does relate a little bit to the file size capacity and things like that. Uh, there is no overall size limits to the amount of files you can upload into function points. So you're never going to reach some sort of limit where it's telling you, hey, you've uploaded too many files or you've reached uh, some sort of storage capacity. Um, one of the reasons that we're able to do that is because there is a per file size upload limit. The per file size upload limit is 50 megs. And it's actually a per upload limit is 50 megs. So if you are uploading a two files at one time, because you can drop multiple files in at the same time. If you upload two files and one is 45 megs and the other one's four megs, then you're, then you're good to go. Uh, you can upload one 50 meg file um, or you can upload five 50 meg files you know, one at a time, but you can't have a single upload of multiple files that exceeds 50 megs. So with that 50 meg, you know, file limit, you can kind of see a little bit about, you know, some of the restrictions you might have. You're not going to upload, you know, large video files. Um, you know, you're, you're not going to upload, you know, super high res in design files that are, you know, going to be, you know, a couple hundred megs. You know, those things aren't really going to go into the system. It's really meant for more for, you know, uh, smaller images, smaller videos, um, you know, uh, rough drafts, completed comps that maybe aren't, you know, in design files uh, that are larger. With regards to uh, backup and things like that, um, of course, there are you know heavy backup redundancies. Oh, that was a bit of a weird one. Um, there are heavy backup redundancies related to the entire system. So uh, the system is backed up you know daily, weekly, and monthly, uh, and those backups are you know stored securely. Uh, Function Point uses Amazon servers, so you know as you can imagine, it's uh, you know the security and the backup routines are, are top notch. Uh, now, if you do delete something from your system, if you delete a file, we wouldn't be able to retrieve it without doing an entire backup of your entire system. So if you give someone the permission to delete a file and they delete a file and you want it back, you can't get it back without reverting your entire system to a time when that file existed. And that's typically not something that we do. I mean, we might have, I think we might have done it once or twice, um, you know, in very extreme circumstances is revert, you know, a, an agency system back to, you know, the day prior or, or a couple days prior if they realized, you know, a bunch of stuff was deleted that they didn't want. But most of the time, deleting information is actually difficult. The system really doesn't let you do it. Um, unless you really methodically go through deleting things, uh, you know, in a very specific order. So it's, it's very, very rare that this comes up. Um, but, you know, it's just important to keep in mind that if you delete the file, there isn't a backup of the file that you can retrieve um, without doing an entire refresh of your system, which is not something that we typically do. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. I just want to see if there's anything else related to this that I haven't answered. And there's one. There's another question around um, 
if you created a folder under the account view, is it possible to move later, either to a different account or a specific job? So you can't really move folder structures. Um, Daniel, can you click on the edit button for one of those files? Just on the right there, just beside the, the trash can, yeah. Um, and if you choose the folder location, okay, so yeah, you can see that, that when you're moving files between folders, you're, you're moving it between folders within the, the master parent that you're looking at. So you can't really move things to other jobs. You would need to, you know, save the file and then up, you know, upload it to the other job. You can't move it around um, outside of the master folder that it exists within. Um, so yeah, so, you know, uh, most companies are going to have, you know, some other, you know, outside of function point method for you know, managing, I'm not sure why that one image isn't opening, um, but, uh, you know, you're going to have some sort of system for managing files out, outside of the program for most of their stuff, but it's a, you know, function point is a really good way of sharing files in relation to work. So if you're assigning a task to somebody, or if you have a team that's working on a job, it's, it's really convenient to be able to, to see your task on your dashboard, see what you need to do, see the description, you know, quickly check out the file, maybe enter a comment and track some time to it. And all of that work is being done within that singular task, you know, that one to-do item. So a person isn't you know, seeing their task in function point and then having to go and look and find a file in Dropbox or in Google Drive or in, or on the file server, you know, lo store, uh, you know, located located internally. Um, it's all right there on the task on your dashboard. You know, very very convenient or all related to the job that you're working on, so people can, you know, at the same time that they're in Function Point, checking out their task, tracking their time, they can see the file, upload a new one, put in a comment, and then continue on to the next task. And that's really the kind of the purpose of it, as we've seen today, is is um, you know, uploading files with relation to things that are being worked on. So I, I hope that uh, I was able to answer uh, the, those questions um, and, and kind of satisfy that. Uh, if there's any follow-up needed or anyone has any additional questions, of course, keep typing them in and uh, we'll, we'll address those or, or follow up with you. Yeah, thanks very much for that, Mike. Uh, I think that was uh, great info. Um, and I just wanted to um, mention something uh, that I noticed and, and I think it's an important thing to, to share with you. Um, some clients uh, have asked in the past, uh, why do we have a 50 meg per file size cap uh, for uploads? So it's not really a storage limitation on our end or the Amazon servers that we do use. Uh, in theory, uh, we you know we could provide unlimited storage uh, with with our hosting services. Uh, the the issue that we um, have come across. Um, would essentially be the upload speeds uh, that our agency partners have. Um, everyone has a different ISP, different upload speeds, and what you'd find is if you do have a file which exceeds 50 meg, uh, and it's a, a large file, and I'll just use this example here, so um, uh, this one here is 400 meg. If we were to uh, upload that, and oops, sorry, I'm having a quick task here, I just show more, perfect. What would happen is you'd have to wait until that file is uploaded before you can do anything else in the system. And as you can see, this is a 400 meg file. And it, again, it has nothing to do with function point with regards to uh, the speed itself being uploaded this slow. Uh, it's uh, really the file size itself and of course your ISP. And uh, I do believe we have uh, some of the fastest internet here as well. So just be mindful of that. And that's why we, we have um, uh, developed uh, that sort of sweet spot, the 50 meg. Now, if you do happen to have files which are InDesign files, Adobe files, and uh, video files, which I'm sure many of you do, and these files could run into the gigs, the hundreds of megs and gigs, then of course we recommend using links and links can be used in conjunction uh, with files. And let me just go back to uh, this particular uh, example. So we're going to go to uh, the Giorgio Armani company page. And what you'll notice next to the files tab is we have a links tab. And this is where you can go ahead and add a new link. And the link can then point back to the asset itself, which could be a two gig file, for example, uh, sitting on your Dropbox or on your internal server. So let's go ahead and just uh, pop in a, a link here. 
and choose what source this uh, link belongs to. And of course, these are also editable, but these are typically the industry standard options and most likely um, used. You can pop in a description of what that link is. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and just submit that. And of course, uh, what you'll end up with would be a series of links. Now these links can of course then be subsequently shared with your clients, uh, particularly those who are using the client portal. Uh, so files and links will be visible by clients in the portal and uh, can be shared back and forth. So that's a little bit uh, about the links. Do we have any questions that have come up around the links there, Mark? Or anything else thus far? Around, around links, no, but it, it, it it kind of relates a little bit um, to a question that, that did come up, and, and that is uh, just around, um, you know, plans to further develop file approval processes. And you know, an example is, you know, someone uploads a file, someone else is notified. They, uh, you know, that person who receives that notification might approve of the file, um, which then notifies the original uploader, and, and so on and so forth. So that kind of file approval process, and. Um, you, of course, I'm, I'm t anything I talk about, kind of in the next minute, is is all related to to future development. So keep it with a grain, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, it's also not something that is currently being worked on by the development team right now. So it's all kind of a little bit of future speculation. But um, most likely, the answer to that question is probably no. Uh, and the reason being is that in, instead of looking at um, you know developing a file approval or proofing system within function point and and kind of taking that on ourselves uh, most likely uh, the direction will be to look at it being done outside of the system but in a more integrated way so that you're you know what Daniel was just showing is the concept of links and you can you know right now you can add a link to a job and, and that link could be to uh, you know a Google Drive folder or Dropbox folder or to something else um, so if you have it you know a high uh, you know, file size, and you, but you still want to relate it to a job. You know, maybe you put it into Google Drive and, and share the link. Um, and most likely, what 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 you'll see progress is is that type of thing, um, where you know, and, and instead of actually doing the approval inside the system, you're doing it outside of the system, but a more integrated way. Uh, and what that will look like, I'm not entirely sure. Um, you know, whether it's it's with Google Drive or something else, uh, you know, it's it's I'm, I couldn't really speculate at this time. Um, but we, you know, there has been discussions around how can we provide you know better ability for people to you know look at file approvals, look at proofing, uh, both internally and externally, um, with tools that are you know designed to do so that are more widely used um, in in a way that's still integrated with Function Point and an integration that's more solid and more automatic. Than, than you know, copying and pasting the link. So uh, you know, that's something that I, I think that you'll you'll see more of in the future. Those those types of um, you know improved integrations with outside systems that are doing more specific functions that we might not take on ourselves. Um, but again, it, I'm I'm just kind of speculating based on conversations with our product team that I've had. Uh, so it's it, nothing is really kind of ironed out or or you know in the immediate roadmap right now because uh, I know that. You know, we're we're still finalizing some of the the work on the schedules and, and tasking and um, dependencies and things like that. So, uh, you know, I know that that's really the focus in the immediate future. Um, at some point down the down the road, you might see something more related to this kind of file approval. But again, most likely, uh, it'll be a more solid integration with existing tools outside of the system. Thanks, Daniel. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. And uh, as we uh, approach the uh, latter half of the, the webinar, I just wanted to um, uh, touch upon the last item that we have on our agenda, which relates to communication, and that will be email integration. Uh, so in addition to being able to add notes to the function point system, pin them from your dashboard, add them from your company page, or add notes to the jobs themselves directly, Function Point does have the ability to capture emails both inbound and outbound that you send. Uh, many times I speak with agencies who use a myriad of different systems. Everyone's doing something differently to keep track of communication uh, using different uh, email tools. And the great thing about Function Point is that it 
does have the ability to centralize all of your email communication and essentially create a copy of both inbound and outbound emails and store them as notes against the appropriate company page in the system. So just like in this case, we are looking at Great Atlantic Insurance, uh, so our uh, fictional client here. Under notes, we have a bunch of notes that we've got in the system. Under the category, we can see that we also have emails. And the great thing about this is if you have a team of 40 individuals, for example, or even just a team of five, everyone can be on the same page and know exactly what's going on. And the great thing is you simply just hover over the email or note title and you can see the actual contents of the email without ever having to open up the email itself. So this is super useful. Uh, in certain instances, you can also uh, link emails to uh, specific jobs. And if the emails themselves relate to a, job, a specific job, you'll notice under the job tab, uh, which job that uh, email uh, relates to. Uh, if there have been some files or attachments uh, shared in those inbound and outbound emails, uh, what will happen is those files will also be stored here as well. So you can have quick access to those. So this is a, a really super useful uh, feature to, uh, to take advantage of. Uh, of course, uh, there is no additional charge to use this uh, particular feature. And it's something that uh, I find many uh, agencies um, uh, aren't aware of uh, initially when they start using FP, but uh, quickly find uh, the, the value uh, in using this particular uh, feature and having everything uh, set up that way. The integration piece uh, itself is um, uh, fairly uh, simple and uh, it's something that your FP Prime or administrator should be able to, uh, to do and of course um, we can provide you uh, with uh, information on how you can integrate uh, your email uh, with FP and ensure that your emails are captured. Uh, one comment I'd like to uh, make is that you need to ensure that the email uh, the email that's uh, being sent to you uh, is um, that the contact is in the system and that their email address and details are in the system for function point to actually pick up that email and recognize uh, which contact it needs to uh, save that email as a note against, including uh, which company or client. So that's extremely important. So in other words, you need to make sure that all of your contacts uh, are updated in your function point system, first of all, including their email addresses, and that they belong to the appropriate company or client. And of course, um, the setup process, as I mentioned, is uh, uh, very simple. Uh, you can do this yourself uh, just by going to our training uh, site here and do a bit of a search. So let's just uh, type in the word email and see what we come up with. Now what we're looking at is our function point uh, uh, FP library and mothership of how to. So this is where you can uh, do your search and, and find ways on uh, integrating your email and everything else really in the system uh, that's uh, system related. So this is uh, the link to integrating your email and this provides you a solid overview of uh, how you can go about um, doing that yourselves. Step-by-step uh, -step screenshots, really simple to uh, to actually set up. And, uh, hey Daniel, and let me... Let me make a suggestion. What I what I think we could should do, and I, I'm not sure. I haven't seen the follow up links, but I know that there's some documentation around. Um, I, I believe we have some documentation around um, setting up the Gmail integration. I know that there's been some conversation re recently around Outlook, I, and I think like there's some there's some factors to take into account as well because I think like the email integration could be pretty powerful. But I I know that one of the things you need is you need a like with Gmail you need a like a professional Gmail account like a business account I believe. Um, but I know we have some documentation, so let's queue up with with Maggie after the webinar, and let's make sure that um, the follow up email that she has, that or the follow up email that 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 you know she put together, that we're going to be sending out, is going to have um, the latest documentation, and we should probably talk to Jeremy about it as well, so just make sure that we have the you know the the best information in that document, and let, let's get it sent out in the follow up email so that people can see the process, because it does take some. It does take uh, some some steps in in your you know company's mail system to be able to have those emails you know, automatically.
being captured by the system, and it's a pretty powerful thing when you can get it done. So let's uh, let's make sure we have the the best documentation on it uh, yeah, that goes awesome. out with the with the email. Yeah, no, that's uh, it's definitely a good thing to to pick up there. But um, we and then there was one other there was one other question. I actually don't know the answer to it, and I was wondering if if uh, maybe you can kind of check real quick. I I think the answer is no, but let's 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 check. There, um, there's someone asking if if there are uh, permissions specific to uh, to making a file um, client visible, and I, I don't know if there is. Like, can, like if you can have one person upload a file, like can you can you have a permission set up where a person has the ability to upload a file, but they don't have the ability to make it client visible? Um, yeah, I think it'd be there. So yeah, you have add file, add client visible file. So, so this question, the specific question was, um, let's see here, uh, can a designer upload art ready for client portal submission and it be approved to make client visible only by the AE? So sort of a workaround for an internal approval system. So basically what the person is asking is, you know, could you have one per, could you have a, like a designer upload a file, set up the, per, the alert structure so that the, you know, the AE receives an alert when a file is uploaded to a job that they are a contact on, which you can do. So you can set up the alert so that the AE, the AE gets a, an alert when a file is uploaded. Um, and then the AE would then go in and edit it and make it client visible. So it looks, it looks like you could do that because you can give someone the ability to add file, but not give them the ability to add client visible file. You would give the, per, the AE the, the ability to add client visible file, um, and then they would basically just go in, edit it, click the client visible checkbox and resubmit, uh, and then it would be client visible. So the answer to that question, thanks Aaron for asking it, uh, is you can set that process up. You could do that. I'd recommend kind of testing it out, you know, set up the, the, the permission with the, you know, the appropriate structure, and then um, create a fake client in the system, which is always something I'd recommend doing if you're, if you're using the client portal. Uh, create a fake client in the system, and then just, just, just give it a whirl uh, and see what the interaction is before you kind of go ahead with that with a real client. But it looks like you could do something like that. Sounds like a pretty uh, smooth worker on there, Mark. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty impressive there. Excellent. Yeah, uh, it's well, an interesting, it's interesting thought. I uh, thanks Aaron for mentioning that. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. Uh, so before we do wrap up uh, today's webinar, and uh, we all fasten our seatbelts and land, uh, would just like to ask Mark, Mark uh, one final uh, question. If we do have anything else um, from our attendees today uh, that we need to answer. No, I think I th yeah, I think that's good. I think um, you know, there's a few people that are interested in the uh, um, uh, the 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 document for the email integration. So let's let's make sure to queue up on that. But otherwise, I think we're good. Perfect, excellent. Well, look uh, on that note. Uh, thank you all for joining us uh, on uh, the last of this particular series uh, webinars. And of course, uh, stay tuned for more as we. Uh, notify you all when we do have our next webinar and uh, we're still um, uh, kicking around a few uh, different topics uh, on the next series and uh, just wanting to make sure that we um, get you all guys uh, trained up there and uh, really uh, getting the most out of the tool as possible. Uh, thanks for being uh, great clients and great partners and uh, we really appreciate your time today and uh, hopefully uh, you've picked up some nice new tricks and uh, we look forward to speaking to you in the near future. Cheers. Thanks, everyone.